Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome yet again to another interesting and exciting episode of Youth Central Happening Live here on Quara TV, Akwata Yakuba, and on Quara State. Today, with me, just before I bring to you exactly what it is we have for you this afternoon, let us uh, first of all uh, welcome our very beautiful dear. <laughs> Thank you so much. Like you guys all know, my name is Nebitaga Happiness, popularly known as Dinero. Oh. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so today we'll be discussing a very, very interesting one that is love languages. Ah, very, I know you all know exactly what I'm about to talk about, but we're going to touch some facts that you probably had never for once paid uh, much attention. So, so exactly what it is, is what De Nero is going to give us back to back. Show more back life, exactly. more so life. What, 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 <laughs> when you hear the word love language, mm. what comes to mind? Uh, a lot of things actually because it, depending on how an individual expresses is our own love language you no know, people see um, expression of love language in different ways and different um, as let me say they have different vivid perspective on how to express their various love languages like from my research I made recently from um, um, Sharpman is a counselor a, cop, a therapist that's it. So according to him, he said in his book, which he wrote in 1992, he was speaking about the five ways in which people express their love languages. One, he talked about acts of service, he talked about caring, he talked about um, physical touch. I don't want to go deep to see if you know what I mean. Yes. So, and uh, he spoke intense about this love language of a thing and how to express it. So, mm. but, but I, I think among us youths, I think okay. the the culture yeah. of proper love communication, let me put it like that. I think okay. it is dying away because these days here, you just hear there's this popular one, so no grief for anybody. No grief. Anybody <laughs> just about what they want, what they want, what they want. No no use or most use, so to say, are really, really, you know, so self-centered at the point where they don't even want to know what the next person has or yeah. what the next person needs. True. If you're in a position Okay, let's create a scenario. Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to use no, it. No, go ahead. I'm not... then, okay, let's say this scenario. Okay. A guy mm. who goes to work works so hard okay. to you know make ends meet to put food on the table and stuff. And then this woman lost attention so much. How do you think they can bridge that gap? Mm. They both have to have this um, um, understanding. They have to come to a meeting point between themselves do you get you cannot be working and i'm the type that seek for attention you are not giving me you know we women we we let me not let me not speak for all the other women out there let okay. me speak for myself if i'm married to a man and he's a busy type he has a very tight schedule and i mean i'm the attention sinky person okay. so i believe he should be able to create that spare time for me as his wife do you get like you can't be working being this workaholic um, um, person and you're not giving me that attention it's really it's frustrating do you get it's you know, frustrating okay I, I i think this is where we have to strike um the balance okay now some persons mm. might not actually want to deny their partner that's of right the attention they need okay true don't you think it is another love language <laughs> for the woman to understand that okay this thing is happening and then she begins to develop basically you just sit down and talk about how to strike the balance instead of the woman feeling that ah, hey, you cannot be doing this and doing that when you need attention you know mm -hmm. attention you know when that is setting even if the man knows what is right even if the man knows the right thing to do he will not want to do because you're not requesting or you're not asking for this thing in the way that you want to with understanding in a situation like this, do you think the woman has more choice or what do you think the man himself should do? What would you think the man should do? Well, for me, I still feel like he needs to still talk to the wife and see me can understand some things from his own point of view. Do you get? If he's trying to still play as to get or this ad guy type kind of thing, do you get it to what, cost? What other, what other, because <laughs> I know this, you know, we can, if you go on, just love one point and the rest are just there. So, what other love languages mm. do you mm. or can you relate with? Mm. 
I can vividly relate to acts of service okay. and as well gifting of gifts. Okay, act of service and gifts. Act of service, what, what is that? Like, um, I mean, doing things for someone without the person even asking. Oh. Yeah, that's it. But I've heard a lady. Hmm. <laughs> I've heard a lady who said that I can never wash clothes for any man I'm not married to, or cook for any man I'm not married to, or anything. Do you think that woman is right? For me, let yeah. me just put this right here. The thing here is some women are trying to claim feminism in the wrong way. Oh. She she's trying to claim she's trying to be a feminist. Well, I think I see reasons with you know what she said. The truth is when people talk, just yes. to strike the balance, when people talk, they talk from experience, they talk from their identity, who they are. Mm. This is determined what they say. Yeah, true, now, true. Experience wise. Let's say this person now had been, you know, they said they're not sad, they're not sad again. Breakfast. <laughs> Maybe they saw this girl breakfast before. Mm. And this girl comes up to say this, you know, you see, I think, sorry, just for a minute. I think this is, uh, it has gotten to the point where uh, you, viewer, please, please, and please get this. What I'm about to say that is very important. Whatever you see on social media or you hear people say, should not be nasty to what or rather what you used to work with or what in you work with in your life because mm. in your relationship per se because you don't know where these people are coming from some of them will come out with hurt from past relationships yeah. and use it to influence others you that you are looking up to them you do not know that you are being misled <laughs> within that it is their experience talking yeah. to you do not know that it is their hurt they will take it as so motivation exactly, <laughs> yes exactly you see this thing is flying around in, on social media exactly stuff. True. so what exactly Okay, let me put it this way. If this lady, mm. after being hot, comes out to say uh, she cannot wash plates or cook or do anything, is she totally wrong? Because some guys out there are actually, you know, they are actually unreasonable. Sure. They see a lady who is willingly, who does the act of service now, right? As yeah. a love language. Sure. Who is willing and is doing this thing for them just to please them to make sure that the relationship is flowing and you see you just see some guys misbehaving they turn the girl to a slave they just start feeling entitled so i don't think what the lady said though that was your own perspective yeah but i don't think she is totally wrong but then interpretatively i think she didn't strike the balance well which is what we are doing now and I think so too. You can offer service, but hey, you are out there, you're a lady or a guy. Don't see someone else's love language as an advantage to ride on, your on them. Yeah, true. So we talked about uh, acts of service. Acts of service. We talked about attention. We talked about attention, gifting. Yeah. Ah, this is the most interesting part. <laughs> you see, I have. I have, I have I have, I have so many experiences and stuff. Spill the two. Why okay. are you here for it? Just spill it. <laughs> um, there's this lady I met one time. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, my story. Wow. <laughs> there's this lady I met one time. Okay. I would go out, you know, probably see a dog. But this thing would be a perfect use for this person. I buy her. I did this thing for three months. Guess mm. what happened? What happened, please? I started getting calls. Mm. Eh. Baby, I saw one hair. I saw this, this. I, I like, eh? Hey, this one won't open up his own hair. <laughs> so, yeah. how do we strike the balance? Because gifting as a love language is yeah. always being taken advantage of. How do you think the balance can be struck? Well, not all women are like that. Not all women are like, are like yeah. that. Sorry to say. But I feel she's just doing it. Probably it might be peer group influence. Her friends might be oh. telling her otherwise. Do you get? Okay. Uh, since it's getting with this thing, so ask for more. Ask, ask for more. But well, I mean, common sense would tell you not to do so. Do you get? For you to, for, for your relationship to flourish, common sense would tell you, okay, this guy is trying, he's giving his all, he's even gifting you things without you even asking. That's the whole lot. Do you get? It's a whole lot. So she demanding for these things from you by herself ah, oh my god please tell me okay uh i think we've hit you know quite a number of known points yeah i'd like us to go into the unknown okay 
So what do you think in relationship? Relationship now is not limited to a boy or a guy, yeah. a girl, a romantic relationship. Romantically, so yeah, true. Relationship, it can be between both of us. Totally. It can be, you know, between family members yeah. and work, uh, colleagues at work and stuff. Mm -hmm. What are the hidden love languages that people seldom express? They don't, it is rare to see people express. You didn't love languages. What do you think? Uh, what what exactly do you think you can pinpoint to say, ah, this is a hidden love language? Oh, uh, one well, for me, I feel. Do you know? Have you experienced sometimes like you are friends with someone, the person doesn't call you, okay. they don't call you, they don't text you, yeah. but the only way they can, they feel they can express their love language towards you is when they check your status. Oh. When you check your status, this is on WhatsApp. I've never heard that. Uh, oh my God! On on WhatsApp, on other social media platform. I mean, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and so on and so forth. So we should check the status of anybody <laughs> we say we know. Yeah. That we care I, I, about. I, 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 I do. I do. I do. I do the same. I do the same. I don't talk to them. It's not like I don't love them, but I feel probably because I'm busy or something. So I just when I see them post on social media platform, I feel okay. That's good. I'm happy. I'm happy to see them you know, what active. You, what you just said now actually brought to my attention something that I observed one time. Okay. There's this lady. I scrolled through my years ago though. I was scrolling through my WhatsApp status and I observed some a trend of a particular kind of posts. Okay. Some things she has been saying like, ah, "Is this lady fine?" <laughs> then I wrote her only for me to find out that her dad had been seriously sick mm. and it has been affecting her. She had not paid her school fees mm. or anything. Mm. Now, the rest of the story is gone now. I had to, I had to call a few friends, we put it together, we raised money and that's how we were able to pay her school fees. Mm. But the worry was still there. This girl fainted the day she was supposed to write one particular paper. Mm. I had to call the SCG president and pleaded. Now, she was permitted to write the yeah. particular paper in the lecturer's office. But what if I had not seen the status? The status, yeah. We didn't even have any relationship. Relationship, true, that's... And I saw yeah, it. it's always like that. So there you go, guys. It is another love language to check the status of people. You know, because it will, it will help you to give you a peek into what exactly they are passing that's through. True. And then, again, if you are fond of posting things that you, you don't really mean and it's, ah, it's my status, I don't care what you think, watch it. Because you you might end up confusing people. They don't know when you are sad. When you are sad. They don't know when, don't know when, when you you're happy. Help. Exactly. They don't know when you are happy. They don't know when you are sad. So please don't confuse people. Post what you mean. So that that's a very, very good one. And then again, one hidden love language that I think has not been mentioned here today is the art of understanding as a service. Mm. Understanding. Do you know that when whoever you are in a relationship with or have any kind of relationship with, when they are behaving in a manner that you cannot explain, mm. do you know that it is normal for you not to accept their character or their behavior? But it is wise for you to consider who they were, who you know them as. Ah, uh, yes, true. Sure. Consider ah, this person does not behave like this. Why would this person call me this name? Do you understand? So yeah. the understanding you exhibit and the response you give back, perhaps say maybe I'm um, um, employing the act of um, uh, diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy is very now, important. Now, then we see that this person, ah, this person, this person understands me and so on. That is a love language yeah. that many people are not even paying attention, attention to. Like uh, Mahatma Gandhi would say, he said, love is light. Since love is light, love is life. Let it shine. Let it shine. Since love is light, <laughs> love is light. And then we know, he said, your word is a lamp and then it is a light. Oh, See, so the truth <laughs> of the whole matter is, yeah. love is a beautiful thing. It is not restricted to either you and a lady you're dating it is not restricted to. Only uh, your family members, it is not also limited to just your colleagues at work, neither is it limited to yourself alone. 
we can see out there the society that we uh, desire to be in, the society we dream for, everything will start with you. Yes, you. It will start with you. And if you have a balanced mentality as to how to rightly express love, understanding people's love languages, it will help us to navigate socially, spiritually, psychologically, intellectually, academically, all wise there is to making the society a better place. We will be holding on for now while we have uh, the next segment with this healthy me. And when we return, uh, we would be wrapping up for today. God bless you and thanks for watching. Good afternoon guys, welcome to the Healthy Me segment here on uh, Youth Central Aquara TV, Abata Yakubai, Lori Aquara State. My name again is Michael Gabriel Dada. Today we have a very, very, very interesting one to share with us today because I know that many of you understand that um, stress is not a good thing. We understand that stress can be endemic to the health. We understand that yes, health is wealth and there is no way in this life you can stress yourself so much and then still expect yourself to have a wonderful day, a wonderful month, wonderful year. You just, you cannot do anything without, you know, making sure you strike the balance here and there. So what is it we'll be talking about today? You already have a clue. Yes, stress is what we'll be talking about. We'll be giving you tips on how to manage stress and then also let you know uh, the signs. You know, if you're if you going through one particular thing, if there's one thing you're experiencing, you can tell, okay, this thing is stress or this thing is not stress. And then, of course, this is nothing but a tip. And then this segment of the program is having only educational purposes we are not registered with any medical organization we are not our medical personnel we just bring programs out for you to enjoy and then learn to know exactly what to do so what is it we need to know about stress what are the causes of stress <laughs> you can of course you know the causes of stress overthinking you want to involve yourself in things that are not necessary or you are overdoing things and the, the beat goes on what are the signs, what are the things you might, you might be passing through or the things you know that you're currently experiencing that you can pinpoint and say, okay, this thing is a result of stress. Number one on the list, I have 10 actually, when you begin to experience aches and pains, you know that you've actually, you know, stress yourself. Of course, those of you that are, you know, into exercises and um, sports, you know that if you walk yourself too much on the pitch, yeah, anywhere on the court, anywhere at all, you know that hey, you will get home and you have so many pains in your muscles and all. Oh, and trust me, you are the only one who will feel the pain. We are not saying you shouldn't work hard. Usain Bolt did the same thing. We can see his results today, but hey, you are not Usain Bolt. You have to start from where you are. So if you are experiencing aches and pains, you know that you are on your way to stressing yourself, or probably you're already stressing yourself. Again, if you experience chest pain or you have a feeling of your heart racing and you want to do something, you're not doing anything, your heart is just racing, you know you're, you're, have, you're finding it difficult to breathe normally at the pace that you know doctors consider normal. Of course, as you're listening to me, just put your hand on your chest. You see how normal that is? If you're beginning to, you know, you're doing a normal thing and your heart is racing abnormally, know that you are currently experiencing stress and you need to rest. Again, another um, sign that you might be going through stress is when you're having exhaustion or you have trouble sleeping. <laughs> I have a friend who, uh, permit me to give you this analogy, a friend of mine, his name off record. I asked him one night, ah, what's up guy, you are not sleeping. The next thing he said, ah, I know they feel they sleep for night. I was like, ah, why would you not be able to sleep at night? Little did he know that he was experiencing stress. It was when I made a research and I called him and said, ah, guy, this is what is happening. And they, like, ah, wow. He didn't know. It was when I told him. And then he imbibed the culture of resting and making sure that he is 
following himself up to make sure that he's not overdoing things uh, and then he struck the balance and today the rest is history so yes if you are feeling exhausted unnecessarily you just do a little thing and you find yourself being too tired like that it is stress it is stress don't think that there is one woman somewhere or there's the village people or those you know ideology no it is stress pay attention to yourself and get more rest and uh, if you're also experiencing headaches and dizziness or you just find yourself shaking a part of your body is shaking no it is not hypertension you're not hypertensive yes it is also a symptom of one being hypertensive but at the initial stage if it's just started know that it is stress all you have to do is number one that is most advisable see your doctor yes consult your doctor to make sure that proper prescriptions is you know uh, made and then before you do that please know with this tip you can already detect that it is stress in play and what is it you can do to manage stress is to rest trust me and there's a friend of mine who said that he has slept that when he sleeps and wake up that is he said no it is not about sleeping alone there are kind of stress that you need to maintain a uh, you need to maintain a strategy you need to maintain a balance the balance of having uh, a plan is okay I will do this for two hours I will rest for 15 minutes and then you go back to the same thing before you know you must have succeeded in imbibing the habit of managing your stress and then you will not lead to anything hazardous and that is that is what we will take we can take for now on the symptoms and if you have the symptom and you don't know how to control the stress on its own what then have you what then what you don't get <laughs> okay so it's also how there are few ways you can manage stress which i'll be giving just few tips on exactly what to do to calm your stress when you find yourself in that shoe number one I've, I've hammered and hammered and hammered. One thing you are supposed to do is to please make sure you get enough rest. Please drink a lot of water. Yes, drink a lot of water and learn to understand that there are things you cannot control. If you find yourself in that boat or rather on that boat, please let things be. Stop assumption because this thing causes, it causes mental stress. Stop assuming things. Don't just jump into conclusion. Ask questions. Even when people tell you what they tell you to make you feel the way they want to make you feel, you should have a way to excuse me, you should have a way to make sure that this is put in check. Rest. Don't overflog issues. Don't over do things and that is what we will take for this week probably possibly next week when we come back on the show yet again healthy me on youth central here live on choir tv apata yakubai law choir state will be giving you more and more tips on how to manage your stress please don't go anywhere have a lovely day as we head back into the program proper have a lovely week You are still on Youth Central live here at Quara TV, Lauren Quara State. Uh, we've had a very, very, very interesting time Thank together, you. myself and happiness, you know, uh, with you also, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for your unwrapped attention. Just before we call it a day, what do you think you have for to leave our audience with own love language as probably an advice or anything at all? Well, what I would say is just no matter how the person um, behavior attitude might be just still still and still love the person regardless mm -hmm. doesn't matter who the person is either your brother your sister or your partner just love the person regardless love brings this thing called unity harmony and togetherness well in the spirit of togetherness of course you know the community or the society that is our dream the community or the society we hope to build the community or the society we want our children to grow up in begins with us. And of course, 
You can never leave love out of the equation. So understand your partner's love language. Learn them. Don't say you've been in a relationship for years and say, are you supposed to know? Communicate it. Tell your partner. Let them know. Don't hide anything. And make sure you are very observant to uh, be able to detect what your partner's love language is and to effectively communicate it. Remember, love or love language is not limited to either you and your family, you and your spouse, you and your husband, or you and your colleague. Love, even, is also not limited to you. Live with love and have a beautiful week ahead. I remain your humble host, Michael Gabriel Dada, and happiness by saying goodbye and have a lovely week ahead. Join us same time next week, 2.30 p.m. every Wednesdays, 2.00-3.00 p.m. live here on Quara TV. Have a lovely week ahead.